Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Larry. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm Tori. And I'm Josh. And uh, that's the very first time uh, you just said... Actually, no, that's not the very first time you just said your name. Maybe for a discussion, but... What? Me? <laughs> yeah, you. Congratulations! You first said your name. You've named yourself. No. Larry <laughs> usually oh. says... <laughs> First he, say, first, he say, <laughs> first he says, hi, I'm Larry. Oh, hi, I'm Larry. We got a Which nice, I like, jazz hands. Larry! It's very, it's very nice. It's I liked that. Wonderful performance. Panache. It's a oh, great right. way to start a discussion, really, truly. Especially one about hmm. psychological issues. Right? We're going to we go yes. dive into an interesting <laughs> book today, so we're ready to start it. <laughs> going to start with jazz hands. I need a time uh, to eat this uh, problem with uh, cracker. <laughs> it's okay. We can stall. I'm very good at being able to do that. <laughs> Look how time. good she is. I'm <laughs> very good. Let me tell you, I'm very We're very going good. over. <laughs> <laughs> We're going over Shutter Island by Dennis Lehane. Uh, I read this book about ten years ago, and uh, Jesse uh, brought it up as a suggestion, yes. so uh, we went and for it. And I'm so it. glad I did. And me too. You guys might recognize it as a movie with the uh, wonderful Leonardo DiCaprio in it. It was directed by Martin Scorsese. Also yeah. a wonderful man. I've so. seen it. Yeah, also a very good movie. So, uh, I guess I'll get started? Yeah? You guys ready? All right. Why not? So, I'm not going to lie, I had a little trouble coming up with a good discussion question for this. So, I jumped online, did a little research, mm -hmm. and found that there are, um, between the book and the movie, a lot of differing opinions. Which, I was surprised because I, I thought it was a pretty straightforward book. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of bring it up. Um... Between the prologue from Dr. Sheehan's journal, the events of the story, Teddy, Andrew, uh, whatever you want to call him, his dreams, and the ending, there are about two and a half theories to the book and oh, wow. the movie. Yeah, again, surprised. Yeah. The first one is everything happened exactly as explained by Teddy. Teddy experienced it all as a marshal and was tricked into thinking that he was insane and that's why he remains there. The okay. second, or the second and a half theory is that everything happened exactly as Coley explained it. The entire four days were an elaborate role play so that Andrew could come to terms with what he did. And the point five part being that um, at the end he did relapse or he didn't relapse. Which is they he pretended to relapse. I was just to say they actually present that as the At ending in the movie. Yes, that was Martin Scorsese's uh, uh, interpretation. interpretation of it, that he um, he added an extra line that wasn't in the book where saying, is it better to uh, live as a monster or die as a good man? Okay, so that did come from that movie. I would I, say, it did come saw from it the forever movie. ago, and I couldn't remember if that was in there. Or yeah. Not. No. I, would, I would go with, I always went with the latter, uh, because when I read it, I was I was blindsided by the, uh, the turn of events. So. Yes. so you hadn't seen the movie? I did not see the movie. I'm I read so the book first. I'm so upset that I spoiled it for myself because we. I didn't know it was a book until Same. afterwards. <laughs> I didn't find out until when we did Mystic River. Um, mm. Somebody mentioned it in the discussion. I was like, "That's a book, you know!" And, and <laughs> got like really excited. So when I was um, on this panel, I was like, "Oh, good! Yeah. I get to read the book." Yeah. I actually felt that the book was very Martin Scorsese followed the book pretty well. It seemed mm -hmm. like that he um, so like commit. I commend him for that because I feel like Orange a lot of... says he's a good director. Yeah, he, he's great. And he stayed, like, true to the course, I guess you could say. I also think, like, Dennis Lehane... Lehane? Did I say that I right? said Lehan. Lehan? I don't know. The author. Lehan. Um, him. Gives you a lot to work with to begin with. Yes. His description of, of the islands and of the people and everything mm -hmm. are so very well formed. Mm -hmm. It was very hard not to be able to picture anything. The one thing I will have to say, though... Um, I kind of found it very hard. I saw the movie before I read the book. Mm -hmm. I did not imagine um, Teddy or Edward or however you want to... Uh, patient 67. Uh, spoilers. Um, <laughs> I did not imagine him as a Leo DiCaprio. I imagined him as taller and stockier and, and, and more block-ish. Um, I did not imagine Leo as that kind of character. I, I saw him a bit as a bit more grimier, but I didn't see him. But then again, you can use makeup to uh, make somebody whatever you want them to. You, I wouldn't have seen Leonardo DiCaprio as Jake or Hoover either. Fair sure. enough. But uh, I. But uh, it's just interesting. The uh, what was your point? <laughs> oh, you were continuing. Yeah, we were just. Continuing. Yeah. yeah. But. <laughs> At what point did you feel uh, 
At what point did you feel that uh, you knew what was going on? Was it right at that revelation where they did the uh, the combination, uh, where they uh, uh, unscrambled the name? I know I can say, um, and I can't say for the book, because obviously reading the book after seeing the movie, I knew what was going to happen. Um, But I remember when I watched the movie, it was actually, um, I believe it was still in theaters, and I had like a bootleg copy, and I sat and watched it on my computer in my room. And I'm sitting there, and I was terrified because I was like, oh man, I really want to see this movie, but I'm scared of it. So I'm sitting in my room, like really scared and watching it, and then Kali said, and everything happened. I was like, no, no, he's not, no, he's not insane. They're trying to trick him. Like, this is a thing. And then, like, as it started showing more and more, I was like, at the lighthouse? Oh my God. Yeah, at the lighthouse. Like, that, no, I didn't see it coming at all. I was so taken aback by it. Like, I'm usually Whoa. pretty good at like <laughs> guessing the twist or the like who the who done it. Like I I don't know. Just in general, like my family's pretty good at that. And I mm-hmm. loved seeing the reveal. In the I will say like I again I saw the movie first. I did not expect it. That big mm-hmm. plot reveal at the end when they showed like everything was amounting to him being the mm-hmm. person that he was hunting. Like yeah. after the fact, you're like. Oh my god! Yeah, like it's just it, boom. you yeah like a <laughs> moment, blown. but like I. It was done very well, um, and this that actually was a, one of the few movies and one of the few stories where I did not expect the plot twist. Actually, I'm, where the like the reveal was like it was him the entire time. I'm gonna use that to go back to the um, the controversial the controversial theory that I actually found because, like I said, I went online to get an idea for a discussion question and found all these different like these two different theories, and I'm like, why do people think this? Because I felt like to me, like okay, he's obviously crazy. Whereas other people compared the prologue um, with, uh, from Dr. Sheehan's journal, he continuously refers to him as Teddy instead of Andrew. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, of course, like the events of the story, there's people saying, oh, well, but you know, these orderlies tried to help him escape, and these things happened, and these things happened, and it all kind of, and they use that as it pointing to um, him actually being a marshal that was there and just being told he was crazy and that's why he's stuck there. And so I, I just thought it was really interesting how people, you know, found those little things that, because that was the only thing that got me was the prologue. I couldn't explain the prologue. I feel mm-hmm. like as a doctor, you're going to refer to the patient by their name. Mm-hmm. And instead he's yeah. referring to the patient as Teddy, which mm-hmm. is not his name. His name is Andrew. And so you're like, like the character hmm. versus the person, yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't know, I just thought like that was a little something that got me. Per- personality, yes. The personality yes. versus the, the person, right? Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, that's what I meant by character. It's interesting yeah, yeah. the persona he takes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chuckle? Yes, I thought that was good. It was, <laughs> I should have caught that wordplay uh, yeah, I didn't catch it as quickly. I didn't, I didn't catch didn't it in the movie. Because then the person saying, like, I, I want to see you laughing, that's how I want to remember you, that was like a red flag right there. Mm. That should have been a big like, hello, how do you do? do you there were a really? lot of red fl- when I when I read it over a second time, I realized that there were a lot of red flags that I yeah. could have caught a hold of ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like uh, like I was reading it thinking uh, the same thing. Like uh, the dreams, especially to me, were like hmm. it seems so obvious now. Yeah, mm-hmm. like after you read it, it's like <laughs> Duh. after I saw, the, you know, I knew the ending. Yeah, you know, from the movie. I've seen I, the I movie. tried to read the book though with like as little influence. It's yeah. been enough time where like I I was able to distance myself from like what the I couldn't remember too much of what was happening in the movie and and what happened in the story. So there were a little in, like a couple of instances where I was like, oh, I forgot that's what was like what went down there and stuff like that. So being able to read it with like a fresh uh, pair of eyes was very refreshing and I just mm. love his narrative. I think he does such a, a marvelous job mm-hmm. with explaining things and his use of yeah. color and his use of um, uh, specifically white. Uh, yes. Uh, isolating and using that to emphasize certain things. There was always a white light or some sort of white um, descriptor to mm. anything that was like significant. So I thought that was very interesting. One little mm-hmm. thing that like stu- stuck out to me. Yeah, I think Dennis Lehane really puts you in the moment. I felt that, uh, I felt the atmosphere uh, that was uh, at Shutter Island and how it was isolating. It was I felt it was cold and desolate. And- yeah, it's very damp. Very, very good job with that. Yeah, and just mm-hmm. like you said, like isolated. Where I, I can just picture, like, okay, yes, they have a medical facility there with other patients and other people, but it puts you in the mind, like calling, 
making the island seem isolated reminds you that each of these uh, patients are isolated in their own mind. They're by themselves, mm -hmm. surrounded by other yeah. people. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I thought he just, he did a great job kind of putting you in the mind of somebody who thinks they know, they know what's happening around them. Because it's and almost then, implausible how a four day wild goose chase on an island yes. that is supposed to be a high security, like, prison. It almost doesn't even make any and sense. It's, and it's so, hard to like, wrap your head around that two. because you follow the whole book believing Teddy because you're believing your narrator because you should believe your narrator. Reliable narrators yep. are my and favorite it's narrators! Like, and then all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. He's crazy, <laughs> but yeah. I've been trusting him as the narrator since the beginning. What are you I talking about? I think Dennis about? Lehane <laughs> did a good job making him a uh, make. Uh, he made a good job. He did a good job uh, making him a reliable, unreliable narrator. Yes. Absolutely, it, yeah. You know what I mean? There was no wink or nod or like. It was. Uh, I've read books where to the curtain. I've, you know, he, there were books where I could not stand the narrator. Uh, I felt that they were very uh, pretentious, or they were very like uh, Holden Caulfield. Oh, and, yeah. but this, this is started uh, on that him. book. This is written in third person. Yeah, I was just going to say was that was um, this stream of consciousness. It was very different. Yes. This is, I can't stand It's not really being narrated. But this is uh, yes, and like yes, you're right. It is third yeah. person, but it doesn't put you inside the mind of anybody it's else. Other third than person Teddy. limited, so yeah. you kind of get the coloring and the shine from his point of view, which kind of, again, lends itself to that sensation mm -hmm. of, this is a story that is, uh, to the most part, factual. It is, the details are given in the clarity as much as the character that you're following. Um, somebody made a really good point of um, J.K. Rowling's uh, story. If you look at all the stories for, like, Harry Potter, Harry Potter, he, in and of himself, as a character, is a very dense character. He's really actually not that observant. So, like, there are a lot of things that, like, are big reveals that, if you looked at it in hindsight, like, wouldn't necessarily be big mm -hmm. reveals, because you wouldn't necessarily... He's a unreliable, reliable narrator in that similar way, and yeah. think of that. So, as a sort of, um, like, kind of follow-up question, um, this takes place in the 1950s, I yeah. believe? Mm -hmm. 1954, um, when the main events took place. Yes, so, um... They... This is kind of looking at more of the uh, medical aspect of it um, as a psychological facility where, um, you know, they're trying to treat people with mental disabilities without using a lobotomy. Um, mm. How do you guys feel about their approach to play out his whole scenario to help him come to terms with reality of who he is and what he did? I think it's interesting that they didn't resort because uh, during that era, the lobotomy was the yeah, thing that they, they orbital lobotomies yeah. were extremely popular, and um, and they would often resort to them, and it was mutual too. I believe it was forty thousand patients received yeah. a transorbital mm -hmm. a lobotomy during that time period, mm -hmm. is what I read, which to me is just a amazing. They, they would give them to just about anybody who yeah. they deemed, you know, um, yeah. a, a perfect patient, a perfect candidate, because it it cuts out that certain part of the brain, and they become docile, yeah. because their brain is not functioning properly. Yeah, so it's but, unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, far as, uh, as far as that method is concerned, I think that it was a bit uh, outrageous, but yes. I think that it was interesting. I think that there are better ways. I think that if you did that in uh, this day and age, or in the general population, I think that it would be... I don't know how well that would really be received. See, here, this, this is what I think is interesting, because people will now pay for those sort of scenarios. Yeah. Where Look at escape rooms. Look at those. Mm. Um, there are whole entire uh, services escape, where you can... Escape room is entertainment, well, though. It's not... This is what uh, I'm saying yeah, is interesting, treatment. though. We say it's radical, and you look at it as a, a treatment for someone, but if you look at it, there are people who have fantasies of being kidnapped and having all these different things texted to them, and, like, there are services you can pay. There are There's a place in Texas, if I remember correctly... I don't know if this is still a functioning thing or not, where, like, normal people could pay a certain, I think it's a, a hefty chunk of change, you could um, escape and cross the border. There are things like that. There are, there are services. There are torture houses in uh, L.A. where people pay you to And these people to stay when them. they get to the other side of the border? <laughs> <and> <laughs> no, no, no. They bring you to Mexico, and then you cross the border into America. So, like, there are there are some pretty wildly radical things like that out there. Yeah. There are uh, sleepaway camps 
that are like haunted house attractions that it's for an entire weekend you go to this camp someplace and you can live out the fantasy of being part of your own horror slasher movie and being a survivor or maybe not surviving if you're not that fast but like so while we say yes it's a radical thing for like yes it's out there to let somebody who is a known violent individual with a violent past who is being severely medicated and an alteration of themselves a two year in the making a complete shift in personality and persona yes it's wild and they give them free reign but like he was never really a fr he was on a tether the entire time so on one hand yes it is radical but on the other hand like that that sh th those shenanigans go on today and people pay for that um so just uh, just something that would always pop into my head every single time i would think like wow this is really weird but then on the other hands this is you a, can pay for that now this is a work of horror or it's been identified as such and it's also been identified it, it could be viewed in a, in that ma matter it'd be dystopian oh it's it's crazy ridiculous but just the thought of from one hand having somebody being told like mm. your entire existence is a lie and then the other hand, knowing that this person had that manipulation happen to them. So uh, no matter what side of the coin that you look at it as uh, the different theories play out, if you just read it straightforward that this is what happened to this person, um, his wife killed his kids, he killed his wife, uh, he came back from the war and had unspeakable horrors, like, plastered into his brain, um, which is a, a, an interesting cry on PTSD and all that kind of fun, mm. fun jazz. Um, the, so it... it, it begs a lot of interesting questions. I think your mention of the P uh, PTSD uh, I mean, leads me into uh, leads, yeah, leads into uh, a question that I had for each of you, and mm -hmm. that is uh, between that and what uh, what had happened uh, that led him to kill his wife because mm -hmm. she killed their kids first. Uh, do you feel that there was any justification in his actions? In killing his wife. In, is what yeah because because of the fact that she killed his kids honestly their kids. in his position i would have done the same thing i hmm. came home from work and she not only drowned them she tied them up and drowned them they couldn't even fight her hmm. Where if he talks about seeing the rope burns on their wrists it means his two youngest children had to sit there and listen to their mother drown each one of them and not only and that, then, she had the mentality of thinking that it was justified. PTSD yeah. or no she PTSD. She said, yeah, like, it, and then she's like, don't worry, baby, we'll dry them off. We'll take them on a picnic. As if they're, if they're not <laughs> dead. <laughs> like, clearly, she is not happy mm. and out of her mind. And here, he has to, like, ha like, he can't even take a minute to grieve because she's going on and on and on. Didn't she also he, make like, remarks about I wanting would, to... I would be just didn't she crazy. also want to, uh, allegedly, uh, didn't she also want to, uh, uh, pump up their sex life, too? Yeah, something like yeah, that. that was like, a random thing at one point. Yeah, she was and hoping to... She was, uh, but that was, if you look at it in the lens, in the context of, yeah. she was manic depressive. But, uh, you have an individual who's dealing with massive PTSD, who is drinking to try and get rid of the horrors that he enacted, as well as seen, and, you know, took part in, in the war, you have a wife who is manic depressive and is being ignored because getting help is, you know, it's frowned upon. It's an embarrassment and it's that stigma. This is a perfect book to show you that, you know, the stigma right. of mental help in any capacity of talking to somebody, of getting medication, of being able to say, I need help um, in any capacity or form. This book is a cautionary tale. Uh, I mean, it goes to the nth degree yeah. of, you know, a woman saying, I want to go home, home. My children are all logs. They are dolls now. Like, it goes in a wild direction, but it is a perfect example of ignorance can be fatal. Mm -hmm. um, and that's exactly what this book is, is this man who could have helped his wife, but couldn't even help himself. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the question of, you know, what is that line of, I think he even talks about it at one point, you know, the reason why a lot of people don't talk to anybody after they come back from the war is because, you know, you lined 500 people up against a wall and because they were Nazis, you know, shot them in the head and their kids, um, and, you know, they had surrendered at that point in time, but, like, the journalists were all cheering 
So you have these atrocities that you've enacted um, that were wrong, but you did them for the right he, reason. I believe he even says, too, because, I mean, Kali brings it up about how he killed two people with his bare hands in the mm -hmm. war. And then even he's, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's even thinking it before he shoots his wife. Um, which is, I can't kill another person can't unless another person, somebody's yeah. shooting, a, a, like, holding a gun to me. And yet here he is, his defenseless wife, who just wants to say, I love you, baby. Let's spend time together. I love you. I love you. And he has to shoot her. And, I mean, he doesn't have to. No, he doesn't have to. But, but he sees in his, his head, like, there's no other, other alternative. Way. Because mm -hmm. it's, if you look at all the other alternatives, it's admitting there was a flaw and there was a problem and that he overlooked it. Exactly. And then everybody, well, not everybody, because the pastor said things, the neighbor said things, like, other people, and that things. was the worst part her is family. that like yeah her family people came to him and said like listen like hello Something's warning signs right. there's a red light <laughs> even your children who are innocent individuals are saying mommy looks at me funny and it doesn't make me laugh and i don't like the way that she's looking at us at night like it, there are problems and it, this is like a desperate cry saying like hello like if you see something say something so mm -hmm. <laughs> in in as many words so mm -hmm. it, it, it wildly written it and like you said like you read it again and even with seeing the movie and knowing exactly where it was going I mm -hmm. it was my that eyes out terrible like, like punch to the gut <laughs> like, of like the re-realization of like oh god like what, what a journey yeah mm -hmm. yeah it was it i think and that lends credence to an excellently written story knowing exactly where it was going and still having fun on that journey of mm -hmm. how is this going to play out and and I think Dennis Lehane does a marvelous job yeah. with doing He that. not only does that, but he also, like, blurs lines. So, like you said, I mean, he blames himself because he didn't get his wife help, um, which kind of leads you to, like, he believes that, you know, he killed his children because he didn't get... Yeah, as an get, extension. Yeah, yeah, as an extension. And she killed his children, so she needs to pay for it, but he also has to pay for it. And, you know, all of the circumstances that led up to what happened and put him in um, Ashcliffe to begin with. And I think it, it kind of, like, do you blame yourself for what somebody else did? Like, is that right? Is it justified to kill her because she did this, but then... But you, you know, didn't intervene. Legally speaking, exactly. no, but yeah. you yeah. get that so whole, it's a whole it's different ballgame. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that gray to, Exactly, area. it's all when it, when gray. It comes to killing <laughs> their children. Like how do you like how do you handle that kind of situation? I fully admit that you know if I were him, I would have gone just as crazy and done the exact same thing and been living in Ashcliffe for two years pretending to be a U.S. marshal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because <laughs> it's just terrible, I'll be the U.S. marshal at Ashcliffe. Mm -hmm. I'll get the lobotomy. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. That's it. Just uh, it. it I, I felt like especially at the end there it was one of those like it's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. That's humanity is is turn a blind cheek to those that seem like they are going to be, um, you know, a, a handful, for lack of a better mm -hmm. term, mm -hmm. when there's not something that you can tangibly, instantly do, give them money, give them uh, socks, um, something like that, the, the things that are going to take time to correct those mm -hmm. things that are inherently off or wrong, mm -hmm. um, you know, you try to kind of put those to the side and ignore them and tamp them down, and mm -hmm. th it bubbles up to the surface. It mm -hmm. always comes mm -hmm. to the light, which yeah. is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to say, I think I, I have one more question for everybody, mm -hmm. just because this was something that I was kind of wrestling with this morning when I finished the book. Um, movie aside, Martin Scorsese's interpretation aside, mm -hmm. strictly based off the book and how it ended, um, do you think he actually relapsed or that he, um, he pretended to so that he didn't have to deal with it anymore? I don't think there's any indication that he was pretending. From the moment he wakes up in that morning, he says he felt clear and crisp and ready to go. And he went outside and just started talking to the, the, the doctor, right? His partner, his ex, his partner, doctor, doctor, partner, doctor, partner, <laughs> doctor, partner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, no, I, I think, I don't think there's any hint of that in the book. I, I feel like there is actually just because, you know, he, he never met the warden until, um, you know, like. So according never to him until warden. he never met the warden until recently so and he can yeah <laughs> yeah basically um and you know he's walking out he he recognizes the nurse as nurse whoever i can't remember Marino, her name Mar yeah something like Marino, that I wanna say. Uh, recognizes her as a nurse and recognizes the warden immediately as dr collie's talking to the warden 
um, and he sits down and he doesn't say he does he he recognizes what's happening around him. I feel like when the orderlies fall into place behind, he recognizes Chuck going like that and giving the signal to Doctor Colley. Um, and and I feel like they say that. So even though like that line that they used in Martin Scorsese's movie with it's implied, but it's I feel not... like it's implied, not heavily implied, but I feel like it's implied that maybe he's pretending to relapse. So um, that way he can get that release of, you know, that his not wife having to live so with either not living. <laughs> living with the guilt or, um, you know, going kind of almost no exit style through the whole entire kind thing of all over Committing again. suicide without physically doing it himself in a sort of way. More or less. That's, that's yeah. how I felt about it. I, I felt that the In a way, came. it's, you know, suicide is taking one's own life. So he said, like, he never wanted to take another life. I'm not taking my own life. If they think, if they're doing it, then, then I, don't I don't have, have to, to worry it. about it. It's yep. my hands. That's ex exactly so how I saw it. So it's kind of how I saw it. Um, I, I will have to say this much. The book, I feel like, um, paints that picture of a character who, you know, um, the Rachel character, how she thinks everybody's mailmen and neighbors and, and the post office workers and stuff like that, and how it's supposed to be basically that mirror of this is what you've been doing this entire mm -hmm. time. And holding that truth up to him in that, you know, perspective, um, metaphorical mirror. I think that's what happens at the end. I think the book actually kind of leans more towards he does relapse um, with the tiny little um, notion of he waving, you know, Chuck waving his hand and shaking his head. The movie, I think, does a little bit more imply that, you know, it was oh, a, a yeah. wink and a nod mm -hmm. of, you know, like, I'm killing yeah, myself Yeah, I think it now. implies it more. But... Yeah, but I, I think, like, reading the book and having the movie as, unfortunately, like, having a reference, I think it actually does the opposite. It does that he did relapse again. Um, and, you know, kind of almost... It, but it's written in such a Lady or the Tiger-esque way mm -hmm. that it, it's up to you, the, to the interpret. Reader, and that, to yeah, interpret. And that's, yeah, and that's kind of why I'm asking. It's, it is it an is, interesting. It's very I, open to interpretation. I like when writers do that, uh, that open-ended method. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm more so on Larry's uh, side when it comes to him uh, knowing uh, much more, uh, knowing very well about everything going on. And so that, he was pretending. And that he, yeah, he was, pla he was... Uh, at the end. Yeah, at the end he knew what was going on. Well, that's the yeah. opposite of what Yeah, Larry it? thinks oh. that he wasn't. It was me that thinks he... <laughs> sorry, was going sorry. On. Yeah, we got that. <laughs> that's sorry. what it's... Yeah, he thinks he relapsed. I think he pretended to relapse, so... Yeah, I, then I would agree I think with the you. I think book... He, I thought I heard uh, relapse genuine from genuine relapse. I think the book's... I, the, mm -hmm. the way that it was initially written, I feel like it was... My interpretation of it, genuinely, he relapses again yeah. because he hit that breaking point, and it's that, like, uh, mm -hmm. it's and not hard again. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well, we're pretty divided on that. Mm. Very Just sorry. Right down the middle. Yeah. Right <laughs> Do we have any final thoughts? Excellent book. I, I think it's a really. very well-written book. It's got some lovely visuals in there. It, it brings up a lot of good points. Some horrible visuals. Yeah. Yeah. That make me cry. Lovely yeah. visuals so in the much. way that it's uh, it was so well-written that it's very good and easy to visualize. Yes. I'll say that much. Yes. And how would we rate it on a 0 to 5 scale, half first permitted? Larry? Uh, I go three stars. It's all right. It's... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I give it three stars. Not your bag. No. He likes crime and punishment. We. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm gonna say four stars. I really I really enjoyed it. Um, like you said, lots of visuals. Uh, again, I felt emotionally kind of connected with it, especially at the very awful part that came up near the end. Um, I feel like it left a lot of things. Uh, open to interpretation, which is kind of a good thing, but it's something I would probably want to go back to and kind of re reread it and see what I see now, knowing how the ending works, not just based off the movie, but like knowing how everything comes together, maybe see if I see something else. But overall, I would say enjoyable, very suspenseful. Yeah, oh, yeah. definitely. I, I give it a five. I, I love suspense and I love suspense when it's well written. And like I previously stated, uh, Unfortunately, it was the movie when I saw it, not the book, but um, it was done in such a way that it was so finely crafted, I couldn't even see the twist. Um, all of the answers were kind of like Chuck right in your face and, and mm -hmm. very obvious and out in the open, and I think the secrets kept in the open are, are the best played, you know, secrets, yeah. and, and I think the book did a masterful job of doing that, as well as having a wonderfully written, extremely visual um, narrative as well. So I think it was... A, I'm, I'm a curious, like... Uh... 
for our for our viewers out there, if you could leave a comment. If you read the book, but before you Ooh, saw the yeah. movie, oh yeah. Do if you read the book before you saw the movie, I'd like to know if you saw it coming. I feel like the movie the, you mm. can't see. I feel like I didn't see it coming with the movie. I was I, even, I, even the, the book. I think up until the the lighthouse, I felt that yeah, the big. Reveal. I had no idea that uh, I Teddy was the one that was involved. It's a well. It's a well enough crafted story that I don't think whichever um, format you see it in or see mm -hmm. it or read it, mm -hmm. I will agree with you. I think the movie does a masterful job at at covering its you know uh, hiding one's hand, but um. I would absolutely yeah. love to hear what y'all like have said, to say about that. Reading, Did reading you it right? over again, it's you could see where it went, but you not read it first. Not well, you know, not the first all round. If the book is as convincing, I give it. Uh, I'm giving it a four as well because I think it was well written and I think it was uh, one of the first uh, mystery, one of the first works of thriller and suspense that I feel uh, did a great job putting a story together where it was the central character who wasn't necessarily uh, an antagonizing figure mm -hmm. that uh, actually was the suspect uh, doing it. That was probably, it was the first occasion I think was done so well. And I think, and that I, I stuck like, with me the most. I feel like Dennis Lehan, right, is... Yeah, Lehane, however you say it. Uh, that feel, guy! Yeah, him. Um, <laughs> he, I feel like, in a way, with this book, he wrote two separate stories using the same storyline because oh, absolutely. you have, like, this is how Teddy's seeing it and this is what's happening, but then you have the actual story of, no, everybody's role playing. We had you recorded. Like, this is what we were doing while you were doing, doing that. And this is what you were focused on, and this is how we made it happen. I feel like he did a great job because, again, uh, it's two separate stories, but the same story. It's interesting, right? Because you don't know what's yeah. real, what's real, right? Yes. So it does a good it enough job. It seems so strange to me, especially at the that. end when they actually let him through the fence. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that, absolutely. That that just seems crazy. On the tendon. Well, yeah. uh, I work in a medical care profession, and it, I mean, it's not an island, um, you know, uh, but we, it's a big enough hospital and, you know, ER versus all the different floors. I can understand where the underlings, because sometimes there can be that communication um, breakdown, um, not like on big major things, but like a, a rando person. Like if you walked in in, in scrubs and uh, had a clipboard, which I think somebody even said, like, it's very easy to like... If you look like you know what you're doing and you're heading in the right direction and you say it with enough confidence, you can get through anywhere. And there are a lot of instances of that kind of happening oh, um, wait, wait, wait. throughout the entire book. My point, my point though, is that like the orderly, right? Let some like help some escape. So is that on purpose or is that? Uh... That's what I was bringing is up with the, the... with the the first theory. How people think that he's actually a marshal that went to the yeah. island was tricked into being. Thinking mm. he's That's insane. Saying. It's like rumors versus having that question, breakdown. But the <laughs> question at hand is whether or not he thinks that they know, because it's it's just this whole mm. matter of mind games. Whether or not he, whether or not they know what's going on. I think the folks that were important on. and close to it knew, but like the farther out orderlies, the folks who were like kind mm. of almost in the orbital, maybe heard some rumors because word always gets around to that that kind of stuff. So maybe they heard snips, snippets here and there, so they would either know enough to say, okay, yeah, whatever, or genuinely believed the lies that, you know, Teddy Edwards, patient 67, spun himself, and because he was saying it with enough confidence, believed it themselves as well. So maybe they, you know, complied in helping because they felt like it was the right thing to do, because they, or they complied in helping because they were told they had to do so without maybe necessarily knowing all of the details. It's or they seems... did know all the details. I feel like if you have that big of a facility, and like I said, I work in a hospital, not in a compound, um, where it gets round eventually, but like if it's four days versus like a couple, it, word has to eventually get round to you, so yeah, I can understand everybody being in on the, 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 you know, wink and the nod, but um, I, I feel like if the situation was that in, impromptu, something's going to come up and you may not necessarily have all of the details and, and you just feel like, yes, I think or whatever. that, and again, I think he, I mean, he does it on purpose in a sort of way, again, to leave it open to interpretation. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, so now it's up to you. Did he actually go crazy or was he a sane person who came in and they're making him think he's crazy? Did he relapse? Did he not? Like, 
that's all on you. It's mm-hmm. out it just seems figure it so out. far fetched. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They would do four days where you're like, mm-hmm. during a hurricane. During a hurricane, too, you know? Yeah, they, they, well, they did plan it that they way. They predicted it. <laughs> I, on purpose. On purpose <laughs> during a hurricane. After them, they said a, stor- a storm was vital to his fantasy. <laughs> but, like, when you hear crazy things in the world, you're like, how could have that possibly have lined up? And it's like, it's mm. so outrageous and ostentatious, it might almost be believable. Mm-hmm. So. All right, all right. One more question I have. Book or movie? Oh, better? Book. Yeah. I've never watched the movie, actually. You haven't seen the movie, so you should see the movie. Well, well, you should see the movie. <laughs> I, I saw the movie. I loved the movie. Loved the book even more. Yeah, I was going to say... Like I... almost having the flip, it made me appreciate the book even more, because I was like, ah. That's kind of how I, I felt about it, too. Like, I mean, it was an excellent movie, and I just remember being floored. Yeah. Like, when, jaw In the lighthouse, like... and, like, yeah. like... <laughs> Like, uh, it really was. It was yeah, like it was my, that, there are very few times in my life that my mind has legitimately been blown. And I have to say, two of those times were by Leonardo DiCaprio. So I'm just, you know, throwing that out there. Have you seen that? Uh, what's that? Um, oh no, the one with the brain where they go inside the dreams. What is it called? Oh, Inception. 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 Yeah. That one. That was. That's, that was one of those other ones. That reminded Leonardo me a DiCaprio, lot. Of, you're amazing. I mean, it's very similar. It's very similar. Inception but, to me was a compl- it was a dream within that was a dream. Such within a dream. Mind, within a dream. That was yeah. legitimately what it was. That but was, yeah, it was constructing was false moment. realities to make you believe in that reality. Like mm-hmm. if if I say yeah. don't think about ele- elephants, what are you going to do? Exactly. But yeah, I can see the but, similarities in the in the story. But so, yeah, no, I mean, I I loved the movie, but I would have to say like book. the book definitely mm-hmm. you know took you up and down <laughs> and myself being the uh the lone wolf once again i'm gonna go with the movie oh, yeah. to see the movie uh if you have a choice between the two i would i would say the movie is better i, okay. I do have to say both are, I do, both are yeah wonderful. they're both great they so, really are and so. if you read the book or if you saw the book um saw yeah. the book so, so if, the you, if you saw the book and went nah and then went to see the movie uh did you see the ending i'm gonna reiterate your question because that's a good question it larry really asked is. that did mm-hmm. you um predict the ending or did you not was that a it would be yeah. interesting to hear yeah, about that. And what gave it away, too? It, it, if you're yeah, interested, if you yeah. If you're interested in checking out uh, the book, uh, here is my copy of the. Uh, and Leonard. I had it on my front. This is the movie tie in. I got this from uh, Columbus uh, Farmer's Market. It's the only thing, other thing that I had to say that in my research online after I read the book this morning, um, I didn't notice it at first. I mean, I noticed it obviously reading. That his children's names mm. were related to the story that he concocted Absolutely. to live in, mm. which like Edward to build Rachel, a good lie, you build um, on truth. Yes, always. Mm. And um, I just I thought that was interesting because in the movie they don't their the boys' names are uh, they're they're all different. It's yeah, Simon, totally. Harvey, or something like that. Like totally different. I, I saw it probably it interesting. ten years ago. So just I thought it was like, I feel true. like it of would have made... Of all the made... things that changed, I wonder why. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I guess it'll throw say... you more off of the set. Yeah, probably. Where is that... That's probably why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go for the reveal. Yeah, his kids, mm-hmm. they were Rachel, Edward, and... Um... Teddy. Wasn't Teddy one of them? No, Edward was... Uh, Teddy is uh, short for Edward. It was... Mm. Oh no, I can't remember. It's right here. One of the only other people... I'd never heard that before about Teddy being short for Edward. Is that uh, Teddy Ken- Ted Kennedy's real yes. name was uh, Edward. Oh yeah, yeah. Edward M. Kennedy. It's Ted Kennedy. How about that? Pulls that out of nowhere. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I let me just Daniel. put it in my magic that's wall and prove it to you. I could have pulled Daniel out my uh, and Edward, ah, there because that's where Daniels came from. I could have pulled out my Chappaquiddick. Interesting. I was like, I thought, yeah, I thought that was interesting too. And I, that, I thought the same thing. It's like of all the things you changed in the movie, like why did you change that? Because I feel like that was really important. Mm-hmm. And they made mention of the fact that uh, Teddy uh, is often a nickname for Edward. Yeah, just I, like, yeah. I just was just wondering like if that was part of the delusion. Barbara. You know what I mean? I was just wondering if that was part of his delusion. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I never heard that before. Already <laughs> <laughs> then. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading.